Hello, thank you for coming. I'm going to tell you today about our experiment studying human papillomavirus entry into cells. Although there's an effective HIV vaccine, this is important because uh, HIV causes about 5% of all human cancers, and we need additional approaches to prevent and treat infection. In addition, these studies will teach us interesting aspects of cell biology. HIV takes a unique entry pathway into cells. Uh, after it's endocytose and it's in the endosome, it must transfer to a series of membrane-bound uh, compartments called the retrograde transport pathway um, before it arrives in the nucleus where genome replication occurs. The key step in this process is the delivery of the virus into the retrograde pathway. And it turns out that we identified a cellular factor called retromer that's important for this step. And if retromer function is blocked, the virus cannot get out of the endosome, but rather accumulates there. And that's shown in this experiment. This is using an assay called PLA, proximity ligation assay, looking for the presence of the virus in the endosome. So at eight hours after infection, you see in green, there's abundant virus in the endosome, but by 16 hours it's left. That's because it has gone on to the Golgi apparatus. On the other hand, if you look in cells that are knocked down for red tumor, the virus enters cells fine, shown here, uh, it gets into the endosome, however, it can't leave. And so at 16 hours of, after infection, there's a substantial increase in the amount of virus in the endosome, particularly compared to uh, wild-type cells. We did biochemical experiments to show that the uh, viral L2 protein, a capsid protein, protein of the virus particle, binds directly to retromer, and that is required for uh, endosomal exit. The current model is that the virus uh, is endocytosis in the endosome. The problem is, though, the retromer is out here in the cytoplasm. So the virus has devised a unique strategy to uh, take, uh, accommodate this. Namely, it sticks the C terms of L2 through the membrane into the cytoplasm. And it does so by virtue of a cell penetrating peptide, a basic sequence that's present at the immediate C terms of the protein. Once it's in the uh, cytoplasm, the L2 protein can bind retromer and other cellular factors that are important for virus entry. I'm going to tell you how we were able to take advantage of this model to develop cell penetrating peptides that actually inhibit HIV trafficking during virus entry. And this is work published last year, earlier this year, by Peng Wei Zhang in the laboratory. Basically, um, uh, the idea is that if we can flood cells with peptides that contain retromer binding sites, they should titrate retromer away from the incoming virus and therefore cause the incoming virus to accumulate in the endosome and be unable to enter the retrograde pathway. So Pengui designed some peptides that are very short, only 29 amino acids. They contain a retromer binding site in the cell penetration sequence, as well as some mutant peptides that have lost one or the other of these elements. And she simply added these peptides to the cell medium uh, for an, an hour before she infected with virus. As you can see here, with a wild type peptide, we see a dramatic inhibition of infection of three different high risk HPV types, uh, virtually abolishing infection. She further went on to show that the, this peptide can actually bind retromer in, in, uh, in cells. It can titrate retromer away from the incoming virus. If she added instead the mutant peptides to cells, either the cell penetration mutant or the retromer binding site, she blocks this activity uh, consistent with the model, how it's acting. And furthermore, if she looks where the virus goes, it accumulates in the endosome compared to cells without peptide, uh, exactly as we would predict um, if we're interrupting the retromer L2 interaction. So we're now currently uh, interested in using the cell penetration peptides uh, to deliver other therapeutic proteins into cells um, uh, and uh, better understand the cell penetration process. In the second part of the talk, I want to tell you about a novel genetic screen we've developed to, do, to isolate artificial proteins that block a virus entry. This screen is not based on gene knockdown or knockout, but rather based on interference with protein function. It was carried out by Zhang Ji in the laboratory, also published earlier this year. So these are, um, it's based on traptomers, which are a class of proteins we invented that are small artificial transmembrane proteins that interfere with cellular transmembrane proteins. The idea is we build these small proteins. They have a segment of about 20 or 25 amino acids that are entirely randomized but primarily hydrophobic. So the, the order of amino acids is not specified, but their chemical composition is. We make libraries expressing millions of these proteins, deliver them and express them in cells, so that each cell expresses only a, a single protein, and then impose genetic selection to isolate uh, rare cells that express proteins with the desired activity. 
So we set up a genetic selection for cells that uh, are resistant to HPV infection. I don't have time to explain the selection here, but I'm happy to talk to people uh, later. But basically this worked and we were able to isolate four different trap numbers that block infection. And two of them are shown here. This here we're looking at infection of cells with an HPV virus that expresses GFP. And so mock infected cells don't fluoresce, shown in orange. Infected cells uh, shift to the right and we see a lot of uh, cells that are infected. Um, however, if you express JX2 in cells, the trap number, a large fraction of cells are not infected. Similarly for JX3, a large fraction are not infected. So we've isolated four different trap numbers now that block infection. Uh, what's exciting is when we looked at where is infection blocked, that each of the four block at a different step. This shows cells that do not express any trap tumor. Uh, looking at 16 hours after infection, you see the virus has left the endosome, but it's present in the Trans-Golgi network, as shown here in green. Trap tumor JX2 causes the virus to uh, accumulate in the endosome, just like retromer knockdown, and never makes it to the Golgi apparatus. In cells expressing JX3, we never can find the virus at this time point. And in cells expressing JX4, the virus is, uh, accumulates in the Golgi network. Um, as I said, we have another virus also, uh, another trap here, JX1, that also has a distinct, distinct pattern. So we want to do two things now. One is to identify the targets of these trappers and figure out how they support HPV entry. And what we've shown is that JX2 actually inhibits the protein that regulates retromer. So it's not surprising that it accumulates in the endosome because that's the characteristic phenotype of retromer blockade. And we are now looking for the targets of these other trap tumors. In addition, we can do a genetic epistasis experiment where we can express combinations of trap tumors and cells to figure out which ones uh, are dominant or act upstream. So, if you, so here we're looking at endosome accumulation at 16 hours. JX1 doesn't accumulate, JX2 causes accumulation. But if you combine JX1 and JX2, express, co express them, uh, JX1 wins, implying that JX1 is upstream of JX2. Similarly, if you combine JX2 and JX3, JX2 wins and plants of of JX3. And so by doing these sorts of experiments, we can deduce the order that JX1 acts first, then JX2, JX3, and finally JX4. And we're continuing to use these trappers to study this process. Finally, I'll just mention that in collaboration with Craig Weilin, we have selected trappers that inhibit SARS-CoV-2 infection, and we'll use them to dissect this process as well. Finally, I want to acknowledge the people who did the work in the laboratory, primarily Peng Wei Zhang, who studied the peptides, and John G, who studied the trap tumors. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer questions.